Welcome to Nand Cloud Garage. In this session, I'm going to talk about how to safely shut down and start up an OpenShift cluster. Okay, within our lab environment, a Red Hat OpenShift is running on vSphere infrastructure platform. Okay, so before jumping to the shutdown and startup sequence, let's quickly recap our OpenShift cluster solution architecture. Okay, so Red Hat OpenShift on vSphere solution architecture. And before deep dive into the solution architecture, our main key components are if you plan to deploy a OpenShift on vSphere environment, we require internet access and we should have a vCenter server running with minimally one year success host. Our recommendation is three year success host and we should have a provisioning network. And the key components are we have to configure the DNS records for the OpenShift cluster. Like we have to create an API record and also we have to configure star.apps record for API VAP and ingress IP. And we can also require a router which is connected to the internet access and also communicate between our OpenShift cluster nodes. And we have to configure a DHCP server need to create a scope to deploy the OpenShift control plane nodes and worker nodes. And we also need a one helper node VM, which is running with Red Hat Enterprise Linux, either eight series or nine series. We also call it as Bastion node or provisioning node. And using this Bastion node, once we initiate the OpenShift cluster creation, it will create a temporary bootstrap node Using this bootstrap node, it will deploy the three master nodes. Master node, we also call it as control plane nodes, and it will configure a worker nodes as well. Worker nodes, we can also call it as compute nodes. This is the high level solution architecture overview. And another thing is we have a communication established between master nodes and worker nodes and also the external internet access. And we have a communication to API VAP and ingress VAP. API VAP communicated mainly on the control plane node and the ingress VAP on the worker plane nodes, okay, for the application and external communications. And the Red Hat OpenShift 4.x, our current latest version is 4.13, solution architecture components, which includes a standard OpenShift cluster installation, creates the following vCenter resources, mainly one folder. Suppose in this diagram, in this screenshot, you can see OCP1, this is the folder and one tag category and one tag. This tag category generally, uh, let me log into our lab system. I will show you where we can see the tag category and tag. Let's log into our lab system go to the vcenter server vms and template select the ocp folder and go to the summary tab within the summary tab you can see the tag section there is a assigned tag and also the tag category okay tag category specifically under openshift okay and we also have a folder the same information i highlighted in slide one folder one tag category one tag and virtual machines are mainly it will prepare you one template. So the, here you can see that this is the template, OCP1 template. Generally, this template is configured with a Red Hat core operating system. In short form, we call it as RHCOS. And it's configured a temporary bootstrap node. Using the bootstrap node only, it will deploy the control plane node and compute nodes. Once the control plane node, that means master nodes and worker nodes are deployed. And later on, it will remove the bootstrap node automatically. Okay. So this is the high level overview. Now we come to know that within our vSphere platform, we have a three worker node and three master node. All the six nodes, if you want to plan for a restart, there will be a, some reboot sequence. We should follow the reboot sequence when we are planned for a, any scheduled maintenance activity. Just in case if we miss to follow the reboot sequence, there will be a uninterrupted issues or we can also face the some of the network connectivity issues once the master and control planes, master or control plane and worker nodes are up. Okay, so let's dive into the today's concept. So how to safely shut down and start up an OpenShift cluster? The main symptoms include schedule maintenance. There is a, some schedule maintenance like annual power shutdown, or if you are performing a disaster recovery exercise, any kind of scenario we consider as a schedule maintenance. So during the schedule maintenance, once we shut down and start up, the expected functionality after the restart should be safe. 
and possible obstacles during restart. What is the possible obstacle, sir? ETCD data corruption during the shutdown. That is one possibility. And node failure due to hardware issues. Second possibility. And third one is network connectivity problems. So to avoid these symptoms, we have to follow the reboot sequence. Okay, shutdown sequence and startup sequence. So before explaining the sequence, there should have some prerequisites. And access to the cluster as a user with the cluster admin role. So today in our lab, we have a cube admin role. Okay, and ETCD backup has been taken. Generally, in the production environment, we have some backup tools like a Commvault, Cohesity, Rubric, and Veeam Casten. We can use those backup tools to take the backup, usually in the daily basis. So, it has to be validated. And gracefully shutdown of the cluster is expected. Okay, this is the prerequisites. Now, let's talk about the how we are going to shut down first so shutdown means in other words stopping the open shift cluster so before stopping the open shift cluster our first step should be stop our applications ensure all applications and services are gracefully terminated so once the applications are stopped and the second step is we have to gracefully shut down worker nodes. So worker node, how we can shut down is suppose if you want to shut down from the graphical mode, select the worker node, right click. You can go to the power. There is an option to shut down guest voice. This is the gracefully shut down option. Okay. This is from a graphical method. From the guest voice method, if you want to shut down, you have to use the command shut down space hyphen H now. This is from the command line method. And once we run this command, we have to wait for the worker node should shut down properly. Let's say within our vCenter, we have a three worker node. So that means we have to shut down three worker nodes one by one. And finally, we have to wait until this all the three worker nodes are completely half. Okay. And after that, the next step is gracefully shut down infra nodes. But in our lab environment, we do not have a infra nodes. But some of the production environment, there are a infrastructure nodes or some scenarios we also call it as storage nodes. If you have a storage nodes included within your OpenShift cluster environment, you have to shut down the infrastructure nodes as well. But in our lab scenario, we don't have the infrastructure nodes. This is a optional for our lab. But in the some of the production environment, there are a infrastructure nodes. So those infrastructure nodes we have to consider once the worker nodes are down, we have to shut down the infrastructure nodes should be powered off okay so from the command line as usual same command we have to use and also if you have a multiple infrastructure nodes wait for the infrastructure nodes to shut down properly that is our recommended step and fourth step for a while stopping the open shift cluster the fourth step is gracefully shut down the master nodes master nodes is nothing but a yeah, control plane nodes so control plane nodes also we, either we can shut down from directly from vcenter server or you can shut down from a yeah, command line method so same like worker node even the master nodes also same way we can select the master right click we can go to the power and shut down guest os so this is how we can shut down the all the three masters, zero, one, and two. Three masters, we have to shut down the master node. Okay, so currently in our lab, uh, I'm not touching to shut down method now, but I am just showing you the options. What is the sequence to shut down the OpenShift clusters? Okay, once this shutdown is completed, what we have to do is we have to start up the OpenShift cluster nodes. So how we can start up is the startup is slightly different than stopping procedure. So startup procedure is starting the OpenShift cluster. The order is reverse. Suppose if you see the point one, two, three, and four, now we are going to start in the bottom to top. So that means four to one. So the first start procedure is we have to start master nodes. So remember, while shutting down, we have to shut down the worker node first, but while powering up, we have to power on the master node first. So being starting the master nodes in the appropriate order. That means if we have a master node 0, 1 and 2, within the sequence, we should follow master 0 first, then 1 and then followed by master 2. Once the three master nodes are up, we have to start the infrastructure node. That means 3 is the sequence now so start our infrastructure node but in our lab we do not have star infrastructure node this is a optional step but some customer environment if they have infrastructure node we should follow 
after the control plane node so after the master nodes are up start the infrastructure nodes okay and the second uh, followed by after once the infrastructure nodes are up we have to start our worker nodes and finally start the worker nodes in the correct sequence like worker zero worker one worker two worker three same sequence you can follow okay and last but not the least we have to verify the applications this numbering has i given just for our easy understanding how we stop the application worker in front master the same sequence is repeated reverse order like first we have to power up the master node and then infrastructure node and the third option is start the worker nodes finally we have to verify the applications while verifying application ensure uh, our all production applications have started correctly and we should use the command if you are verifying from the command line oc get pods hyphen hyphen all hyphen namespaces make sure that all our application parts should be up and running normally okay and last but not the least and we have to run the another command oc get nodes to ensure all nodes are in the ready state so that means suppose if you're connected to our open open shift cluster environment either in the graphical mode you can go to the compute and node section you can verify the status should be all are in the ready state this is the graphical way verification suppose if you want to validate from the command line connect to our open shift helper node and you can type the command oc get space nodes when you type oc get space nodes all our master nodes three master node and three worker nodes all should be ready state but maybe the other customer environment they may have one worker node or they may have n number of worker nodes all worker nodes and all master nodes status should be ready state okay after our power up the open shift cluster nodes and remember while powering up we have to power up the master node first and followed by infra and then worker nodes finally application validation okay so with interest of our time i am not powering off now but I, I explain you the sequence how what is the sequence to stop and what is the sequence to start the open shift cluster nodes okay hope you understand this point and finally the quick summary is safely shutting down and start starting up your open shift cluster is crucial to avoid potential data corruption and are hardware issues and follow recommended sequence for stopping and starting the nodes to ensure a smooth restart and always check the status of applications and nodes after the restart to ensure successful cluster recovery so the commands the key commands are this is the two commands oc get pods all namespaces and another command oc get nodes but some scenarios if you notice our actual point within the within our symptoms one of the key point in some scenarios there is a chances of network disconnections network disconnection means let's say within our uh, if you want to see the ip address from this command let's say space hyphen o wide we can see the ip address information internal ip and external ip some cases after restart you may get the different ips or the ip may refer differ you may get instead of the actual ip you may find the different dhcp ip that issue also may occur and during that scenario what we can do is uh, suppose here ip is 61 after restart it has to get the same ip but some okay some scenarios after the restart if you didn't follow the actual startup sequence you may get into the different ip sequence from the dhcp server to avoid that scenarios what we can do is we have to reserve the dhcp ip for example let me connect to our ad server let's say when i connect it to our ad server i will show you how we can reserve the dhcp ips currently in our lab environment we are using the dhcp in a windows system suppose if you are using the linux environment same way in the linux also you have to reserve the specific openshift cluster node ips if we expand our dhcp server and there is a scope is available when you go to the address leases currently these address are already released when you see here there is a three master and three worker nodes you can just select this master nodes and worker nodes currently there is no reservations within our dhcp when you select the address just select this ips right click you can add to the reservation when you add to the reservation definitely even though when you restart the shutdown our open shift master node and worker node and startup there will be no impact to our network connectivity issues even though after 
following the sequence, we will get the accurate IPs. For master 0, it will get the 61 because we already reserved our IPs for the master node and worker nodes. Okay, this is the one common workaround solution. If you are using a Linux DHCP, you can reserve it in the Linux DHCP environment. And also, even if you have a DNS environment, even the DNS also, if you want to create the records, we can create the records in the DNS environment as well. Let's say when you see within our DNS, we have a only for APA record and we have a startup record. Even in the reverse lookup zone, when you select here, we have a record for APA dot our cluster name ocp1.anpslab.com and 48 for star dot apps. Only two records we have for a OpenShift cluster, but there is no record specifically for a master and worker nodes. If you want to reserve, you can reserve it in the DNS as well. So how we can reserve, you can just copy, we can create a, a host record, a record and pointer record. Just copy this host record, enter the host name and again paste the IP address. Our IP address is master0 is 61. So you can just paste it here and create associated pointer record as well. So click on add host, click on OK, done. So 61 is created. Even in the reverse lookup zone, just a refresh here, you can see 61 is created. Similarly, we have to create the record for master one, two and worker nodes to avoid the network connectivity issues. Okay, so the record creation is same like master zero. Host record and we can also create for a IP address. So IP address is 62. Just copy paste, add host, click on OK, done. And pointer record also, it will create automatically and same way for master two. New host record and copy the IP address. and similarly the worker nodes. And copy the IP address. We reserved at the DHCP level as well as we created the DNS records. And same way for you another worker node and same way paste the IP address. And similarly, a last worker node, worker node three, copy, domain name, new host record, and we have to copy the IP address. Okay, so this records, we can also validate from our reverse lookup zone. Just that means pointer record refresh. You can see 61, 62, 63, 4, 5, 6. So three master, three worker node, and we also have APA IP and star.apps, ingress VIP also created, all are created. Even generally 47 is assigned for a control plane and 48 is assigned for a worker nodes. If you want to validate, you can validate from the our master node, there is a multiple IPs. Suppose master one, see 47 assigned here. And same way worker node also, one worker will be identified with a 48. Okay, the same uh, in API VAP, ingress VAP explained in our architecture as well. Okay, so hope you understand the, how safely we can shut down and start up the OpenShift cluster. But except the infrastructure infrastructure node, we do not have in our lab, but same procedure if you have, okay? And remember the sequence, how we can shut down. The first will be like a start of our application, followed by we have to stop worker node, infrastructure node, finally master nodes. And while powering up, we have to power up the master node first and then infrastructure node and followed by worker node. And finally, we can validate the application pod health status and all our OpenShift cluster node status should be ready state. Okay, that's it. Yeah, thank you. So if you're watching this video first time, please do view, like, share and subscribe to the Grand Cloud Garage channel. If you're already subscribed, I appreciate all your support. Bye for now.